So uh, thank you, Ali. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. My name is Fernando Maier, and this is a joint work with Paulo Justiniano. We, we are from uh, Federal University of Paraná in Curitiba, Brazil. Uh, so my talk will be uh, about special temporal bias and biomass dynamic models. Uh, in general, these models, they are tools for fisheries manage assessment and management, and they consist of a set of dynamic equations, one that describes the underlying process, in this case, the population growth dynamics, and other that describes the observed data process and how they are linked. Uh, so the so-called process model represents the way a population evolves over time, and here it is usually represented as a modified logistic growth model. This is called the, particularly the Schaefer model. And it depends on two parameters, which, which is R, the intrinsic population growth rate, and K, the population carrying capacity. The observed equation says that catches here depends on the biomass of the population and the fishing effort and the catchability coefficient key. If you divide catch by effort, we get the catch per unit effort, here denoted by U, uh, which is directly proportional to the population abundance up to a constant. So several estimation methods were developed through the years, starting from equilibrium methods, which showed not to be a very good idea. After there, there was regression methods, then errors in variables, and ultimately uh, the state space framework. All of these methods have their pros and cons, but a common problem is the way uh, errors are considered in previous equations, as dealing with both process and observation errors simultaneously may be intractable. Uh, another problem is that the data is aggregated over time and space. We only use uh, yearly sums, so uh, therefore all the spatial variability is not considered we, uh, within years. So the main objective of our work is to propose a method that allows for both process and observation errors, uh, uses disaggregated data, uh, which means that we can use uh, area, uh, area and year data, and this uh, allows for time and space varying parameters, which can be a good thing for fisheries management. And one of the objectives also is to use fast computation methods, specifically in a, in a Bayesian framework. So, uh, more specifically, we considered a general form of the biomass dynamic model, including not only time indexes, but also area indexes. Uh, we also included both process and observation, uh, in process and observation multiplicative errors. And we also treated the, the parameters R, K, and K as random variables over time and space. So to estimate the desired parameters, we use a linearized form of dynamic equations. So if we consider the, the composite process equation here in the first line, and using the relation of biomass and CPUE, and after some uh, little bit of algebra, we obtain this linearized model, which can be written as a linear model like we can see here, uh, where the beta parameters correspond to some form of the desired parameters we want. So more specifically, uh, to estimate these three parameters, we developed a two-stage approach. In the first approach, we model uh, disaggregated data. Uh, that means that we model uh, catch and effort data by year and area. And this aims to make the relation of CPUE and biomass, in fact, proportional and to minimize observation errors. And in this stage, we use it uh, seven models. Uh, we test seven different models. So in the second stage, we use the predicted uh, catch, hence the CPUE in the first stage, as a response variable in the linearized equation shown above. Uh, 
Then posterior marginal distributions were obtained from the transformation of the parameters, which you can see here, after obtaining the joint distribution of the beakers. And to test the method, we used simulated data and all models fits, and also the simulation were made using EMA. So more specifically in the first stage, what we do is to use the catch equation and take the logarithms in both sides of the, this observed equation. And as we consider the biomass a latent variable, we cannot observe it. So it is decomposed in a set of time and area random effects. So these random effects, they may assume different uh, error structures in time and space, and we consider it here. Uh, so, seven models, we, we were able to build seven different types of models, sorry for the Portuguese here. Uh, we, were, we, we were able to build seven different types of model, and the difference between these models is that they assume different structures in time and space, uh, and also four different types of space-time interactions. And after the, the model fit, we used the, the mean of transformed posterior distributions for each observation, they were used as an estimate for the catch in the next, the next stage. So the second stage, we first consider it, uh, we first consider it uh, using aggregated data. This is just for, uh, for comparison. We don't intend to do this, but we use the aggregated data again for comparison, uh, using the predicted catch in the first stage. So in this uh, second stage for aggregated data, we used four different models, varying the level of time random effects in the parameters. We also used the aggregated raw data also for comparison. And uh, when we use this aggregated data, the same way, we use the catch predicted in the first stage to model this disaggregated data. And here we could build 10 different models with different Hanno space-time effects. Uh, and also we use the disaggregated raw data just for comparison. So to simulate from this model, we use this generic biomass dynamic model and assuming that all the parameters uh, were Hanno variables structured in space and time to allow for space-time dependency. Uh, two simulation scenarios were developed, where the first, the first simulation was primar primarily for model assessment, where we generated only one data set, fitted all models to this data set, and obtained the posterior distributions for each of the parameters, and from this posterior we simulated 10,000 samples. The second simulation was just to check bias and coverage, and we will not have time to show them here. So we simulated data for 25 years in a, in a regular lattice and for considering 50 years. So the, one of the main results was that only with the, the effort fixed, the, the trajectory of the effort was fixed uh, along the, the 15 years. And with that simulation, we obtained data for catch and biomass enhanced CPUE, and this result showed that an expected behavior of the, the relation of catch effort and CPUE. So if we look a little bit closer, uh, this is the time series for each of the 25 areas. We clearly see that areas near to each other have similar trends over time. And if we look in the other way, the spatial distribution over the years, we see we also see similar trends over time and between uh, similar and between closest areas. So the result of the seven models in the first stage show that clearly the spatial temporal interaction should be considered as you can see here by the residuals. The last three figures here are from these models with space-time interaction. So clearly you can see that they are, they perform better. Also, measures like AIC uh, agreed with this result. Uh, this graph shows the 95% credible intervals for the posterior of each parameter. Each panel 
line corresponds to one of the seven modules from the first stage. And inside these panels, we have the modules from the second stage fitted with predicted values from the first stage. And the dashed vertical lines correspond to the mean of the true values of the parameters. Clearly, we can see that with, when we use aggregated da data, there is some serious bias, particularly in the t parameter. And when you use disaggregated data with, pre with predicted data from the first stage, we see that in general, the better uh, estimates can be obtained when you use predicted data from the more complex model from the first stage, the three last lines here. And within these models, the best estimates comes from models where spatial or spatial temporal random effects were used. So just to conclude, the simulation that we developed can be extended for various scenarios. This was just one particular scenario we used. Uh, both simulation scenarios show the green results. Uh, all models considering aggregated data showed considerable bias, particularly for T parameter. And using disaggregated data, even raw data, uh, always outperformed aggregated data estimates. And uh, using predicted data from the first stage improved estimates in the second stage. Uh, so it's clear that the spatial structure must be taken into account if you, if you want to, to consider these sort of things. And the spatial distribution of parameters can be directly used in fisheries management, management which is uh, something we are, we are working on. So thanks for watching.